15, remember, these are the new men, not 13 and 15. 7 and 25, not even close. Uh, 7 and 5, uh, sorry, 7 and 25, these are the new material. And these will uh, probably have a little bit more than the old material, just because these are two big uh, chapters. But these should be more fresh, so we don't have to spend as much time on. I'll just hit on the major uh, ideas. With chapter 7, there's three big topics. We talked about uh, epigenetic inheritance and extranuclear. With epigenetic inheritance, it's based on the nucleus. There are two types, trinucleotide repeats and genomic imprinting. With extranuclear inheritance, also of two types, either mitochondrial or chloroplast. Now, there is cytoplasmic inheritance, per se, that is we did not discuss, but we will not be... Uh, oh, and before I forget, I, I mentioned it in the last review, uh, my, uh, uh, chloroplast inheritance in chlamydomonas, you're not responsible for that section. I did go over it, but you're not responsible for MT plus, uh, MT minus, and so on. Don't worry about that section. So with genomic imprinting, you have to, there might be some true and false questions. For example, genomic imprinting is based in the nucleus, true or false. Right. These are nuclear genes. No, it is true. Genomic imprinting is nuclear-based. But what is unusual about it is that it shows what? Monoallelic expression. So either the father's allele will be active or the mother's, not both. Okay? So if you have to remember one thing about this one, it's, it's this one. Okay? Now, for this chapter also, uh, before I forget, uh, you have to know which disease is which inheritance. So for example, uh, Prader-Willi is a genomic imprinting disease. Uh, Lhan, which is uh, Labor's hereditary optic neuropathy, is mitochondrial disease. Myotonic dystrophy is trinucleotide repeat. So you have to know that uh, association. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to uh, tell you which one it is, but you'll have to know it. So let's focus on genomic imprinting. Uh, don't, I mean, the first part uh, is just to introduce the topic. For example, don't worry about ligers and uh, tigons and, you know, hennies and uh, mules and endogenote and exogenote. This part is just to set it up. From that first part, please uh, remember that the maternal and paternal genomes are not equivalent. That's the take-home message from that part. But the rest of the chapter, you would have to know the details. So for example, if I give you, uh, you will get crosses of this type. Uh, You're given this cross, IGF2 times IGF2, IGF2 times IGF2, IGF2, M. Now, you would have to remember, of course, that IGF2 is insulin growth-like factor uh, 2. M is, of course, the mutant. So you're given this cross. What do you get, A, B, C, or D? D. And why? So that you don't get it by chance. Why can't you tell? Exactly. You don't know who... Literally, who's the daddy, right? Because the, you have to remember that this one is a genomic imprinting uh, allele. And it's only active in where? In the father. So if this person is, or this rat is the father, or this mouse is the father, and this is the mother, what do you get? All what? Why? This is the active allele, and it's already mutant. This is normal, but inactive. So they don't get any active allele. They're all going to be dwarf. If, on the other hand, you have the reciprocal cross, all of them are going to be normal. 
if you get any different type of you know combination, you just work it out that way. It's the father who you're worried about. Because the father's allele is the only active allele. Now, Prader Willy, let's work a little bit of Prader Willy. Uh, with Prader Willy and Engelman, please don't worry about the details. Uh, which one shows obesity, which one is the uh, you know, hyperactivity. But please do know what potentially could give rise to them. So for example, uh, with, and don't, don't worry about the details of the genes. Uh, although you know, some of the quizzes probably have uh, quizzed you about the actual uh, gene. But what I would like you to remember, first of all, is we, what is deleted in the region 15, Q11 to 13, or 1, 1 to 1, 3. Uh, and uh, how are they inheritance, uh, inherited? And, and, and in my, uh, that's how I remember them. You might have a, a quicker way, a better way. Uh, but you will be asked about them. So for example, uh, you do have to know that the Prader Willi is due to a paternal deficiency. <coughs> what does that mean? So for example, with that in mind, uh, let me ask you this. So uh, let me just ask it to you uh, verbally. You have a uh, father who happens to have Engelman syndrome, the deletion form. So a father or a person, uh, a male, has Engelman syndrome of the deletion type. And assuming he is fertile, his wife is normal. What type of disease, if any, could his children have? The father has Engelman syndrome, the deletion type. He has, assuming he ha can have children and his wife is normal, what type of disease, if any, would it be, his children be expected to have? And the answer is, think of it this way. If the father, if the father has Engelman syndrome, right, their children will inherit what? A paternal deletion. They're going to get Engelman syndrome, sorry, Prader Willi, right? We just said it. You get Prader Willi from a paternal deficiency. So if your father has Engelman syndrome due to the deletion type, that means he's giving you a deficiency from the paternal side. You're going to get, I mean, that child will get what? Prader Willi. So be careful about these. It's not like if you're Engelman, all your children will be Engelman, depending on whether you're the father or the mother, yes. But does that matter if your child is a girl or a boy? No, it doesn't. It's, it's not what the children are, it's who the father or the mother is, or the disease that is. Now the other, uh, uh, you have to remember the difference between paternal and maternal dysin, right? So true or false, Prader Willi is caused by a maternal dysemy, right? That would be true, why? Because a maternal dysemy is the equivalent of a paternal deficiency. Because remember, deficiency simply means that what was supposed to be there is not. So if it was coming from the father and it's not there, it's like saying that there's two chromosomes from the mother. With trinucleotide repeats, you don't have to go into uh, you know, the details of the trinucleotide repeat. What I would like you to know, uh, please, is again, what is a trinucleotide? What is anticipation, for example? It's getting worse. Don't worry about the number of repeats, nor what is the uh, 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 position, whatever. Uh, but know the diseases as well. So for example, myotonic dystrophy is trinucleotide repeat. Huntington disease, trinucleotide repeat. Fragile X syndrome, same thing. And do know what each is. Fragile X syndrome is what type of disorder? Gastrointestinal, right? It is the most common form of mental retardation. Myotonic dystrophy, muscle uh, problem. Huntington disease, nervous system. Okay. Uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts, same thing. Uh, do know uh, what in general is the, uh, the type of uh, DNA you're dealing with, right? It's circular or linear. Don't worry about how big it is, but do know unusual features about it. So for example, with mitochondrial inheritance, it's only two mRNAs, one of each strand. Uh, chloroplast is bigger, 
what else is there? Um, 